Good evening, Sean here, Mountains Garage. Tonight, I'm setting up the rear roller thrust bearings in both the 475 transmission that we've been building in this series and its twin brother or sister, depending on how you look at it, the Turbo 400 from the other side of the bench. I'm going to use the normal TH350 pump bearing and shim on the 475 with my 475 lower gear unit and on the 400 which is going to have a fully rollerized angular cut lower gear unit I have a Sonics no walk bushing with the larger bearing and shims and we're going to set that up at the same time let's get to it both transmissions are going to get an ATI 4340 steel output shaft. It is a nice looking piece. There is no provision for a governor drive gear. It appears I can install a speedometer drive gear. I'm in hopes so on both units having a speedometer drive gear and a driven gear. I don't really care, care about the number of teeth. If I can just get something to spin off the output shaft, I can install a tone generator and it'll run pretty much any electronic speedometer. You go ahead and if you've ever done it, you measure out a mild course and pulses per mile, push a few buttons and your speedometer is accurate. If you're going to run an electronic speedometer, if you want to go through the hassle of getting the correct drive and driven gear for a cable drive speedometer, for your tire size and rear gear ratio, you can do that as well. I'm kind of hip on the electronic version. I'm even hipper on a GPS speedometer and not needing any of this back there and driving a cup plug into the case of the transmission. But I was doing that for a while, just plugging it right off, and I sold a few transmissions and people wish they could hook up a speedometer. So I reinstall it for now. I can always take it off. If you look closely at the splines, it's already marked if you were going to cut it for a four-wheel drive transfer case. I believe that's 203, 208, potentially 205, although we always ran them full length, a regular two-wheel drive output shaft with what was in a 205, but there is the extra mark there. So whatever the reason, you could look at ATI's website, they'll probably tell you, but those are spline for cutting if you wish. And I have tried this being a brand new piece. I've tried it into my strange yoke and it's a nice fit. That's the pot number of the output shaft and they're in the 130-ish dollar range. Not bad. A 300M shaft starts over $400. At this stage of the build, while the output shaft is loose, I like to test fit it into the bushing that is in the case. At this point of case prep, the original bushing still remains in the case because I like to evaluate it. And when I set just the output shaft down in dry, I want to make sure it won't go up and down and spin it. Make sure there's no rust spots or anything. And you can, if you've installed a new bushing and felt it and installed or checked a used one, you can tell when they're good and when they're bad. In this case, this is a non-HD Pontiac case. This transmission was allegedly rebuilt and never used. The bushing is just like new. So I see no reason to change it. It's elevated up off the bottom, enough to hold my shim and register my bearing. I'm gonna run it as is. It's a different story inside the HD case. I can actually physically move the shaft up and down in the bushing a little bit, noticeable. So therefore, this bushing is coming out, and I'm going to install the Sonex no-walk bushing. From the factory, these two pieces ran on the back of the output shaft. The four-tang thrust washer would have been installed just like that on the output shaft. This three-tanged washer sits in the bottom of the case as grooves to hold it from turning. This is selective for thickness to set your rear end play on the output shaft. 
I'll repeat it when we get to working on the lower unit, but we're gonna take this from its former home and install it in the lower unit to replace a plastic thrust washer that has the identical dimensions. It's a direct replacement. So we'll do that in the future. So we'll hang on to that or one just like it. We'll discard this. We're gonna replace it with a TH350 pump bearing. It's on the back side of the pump. And I have a selection of shims that also for, is for a TH350 pump. So you can set your front end play on a TH350. Wouldn't have been nice if the 400 came with this, but it didn't. That's a whole other story. Measuring the combined thickness of these two pieces, I'm at like 142 thousandths. The bearing itself is about 140 thousandths. And I know from experience that the rear could stand to be tightened up considerably. So I'm gonna take 140 thousandths bearing and put a 10 thousandth shim on it. So my pack is gonna be 150 thousandths thick, effectively taking about eight thousandths out of the rear end play. And we'll start there, but typically this is spot on. The end play specs for a Turbo 400 is seven to 19 thousandths. That's a pretty big range. We need to fall in probably on the tight side. We'll check it out when we get to that point, but easily adjusted with the one shim that's gonna sit up on the rear bushing, kind of register it. Now we come to the Sonex no walk bushing. It's called a no walk because it has the raised area and when you drive it down into the case from the inside, it can't be pushed backwards anymore. A lot of people bought this rear bushing when it came out and tried to run the 3 TH350 pump bearing, they're not compatible. This does not fit over that. This is a correct GM bearing and it fits over. And this stepped area that prevents the bushing from walking out also registers the shim and the bearing. Pretty simple. A great idea. They're fairly expensive, this whole kit. It comes with the bearing the bushing and a bunch of shims. That's the pot number right there. It's going to run you probably 30 bucks. So I'm going to drive the old bushing out of the case. This is the time to do this stuff. I'm not worried that my case is all prepped because it's still empty. So any debris in there, I can blow it right out. The no walk bushing has to be installed from the inside out and it's a long way down there. So I'm going to use my cam bearing tool. Perfect for the job. I get a kick out of the instructions. It says after installation, if should your output shaft have a tight spot, to just whack on the thread on the splines back and forth to seat it in. It'll loosen up. Hey, they know what they're talking about. Sonex makes some good stuff. This isn't rocket science. The installation of the bushing is about as easy as it gets. I actually drove it down through with the cam bearing tool in this position so any debris fell out. Wiped out the bore and installed the no walk bushing until it stopped. There's no thought process involved. It's virtually foolproof. Comparing the bearings themselves, they're the same thickness, about 140 thousandths a piece, so that didn't change. This came with two 10 thousandths and two 15 thousandths shims. I'm going to start with one 10 thousandths just like I'm doing over here. That pot should work out the same. These shims are obviously larger to match the larger baron, and the TH350 pump shims match the TH350 pump bearing. All test fitted up. It's beautiful. No play. Spins nice and easy. The instructions tell you how to orient the baron, so you can't mess that up either. This may be a $30 kit, but I have to say, it's pretty nice. By comparison, if you shop around for the TH350 pump bearing, it's between $9 and $15. The bushing's going to run you $8 to $10, and you still need a selection of shims. We're pretty much talking a few dollars, if not the same money. So I hope you continue to follow along in this series while we simultaneously assemble two similar but different transmissions with different levels of modifications. 
Up next for the 475 is to actually go through the lower gear unit that makes it a 475, the straight cut unit. My theory is I don't need additional roller bearings where thrust washers used to be because it shouldn't be thrusting back and forth. Again, I'm just totally winging this in my head. I probably wouldn't update anyway at this power level. However, I did buy a used low drag, which is all roller baron where thrust washers used to be, lower unit for the 400 on another late night shopping excursion, and we're gonna get a look at how that's done. I don't think I'll be able to read the numbers and the barons and stuff, it'd be handy, but I know there's a lot of data or information on the internet about what part number barons to put where. I'll try to round that up for you so we can have a clue how to do it if we wanted to. So I've never done one, so. This is a good way to get a look at one. So in the wild, as it is. So like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody. Have a good night and I'll catch you next time.